Professor Patil, tell us about some of the research you did at MIT and then later the University of Utah and the grants that you got that enabled you to start the TL systems. Uh, do you want to see the... Yeah, if you like. Do have the slides? Yeah, if you like. Yes, you can do that. Well, I have props. Show the props. The props are <laughs> slides, I can get those. Yeah, but the picture, you know, they are covered in pictures. I actually begin from uh, okay, while, while he finds let me uh, uh, share with you. Um, I had been, when, uh, after my doctoral uh, degree at MIT, I was invited to be on the faculty. And the uh, group, uh, Jack Dennis's, Professor Dennis's group that was there, was uh, in, interested in uh, self-time logic, meaning doing digital systems without using clocks, okay? And the conventional uh, wisdom that time was that you cannot design it at all. So we, uh, I figured if it was some kind of structured design, I think it would be possible. In fact, that's what I was working on. And as a, as a result, yeah. Okay. So, the right that the hold it there. Is that okay? Yeah. Just like go forward with that. Oh, no. State. That's the MIT, MIT research yeah. project. So what happened is, um, you know, at the same time, while I, it was happening, I was watching from East Coast progress being made in semiconductor on West Coast, and particularly impressive was, you know, Intel's four zero zero four, which. You know, Robert Nance himself came to tell us what it was all about. That was uh, the first microprocessor that was invented by Ted Hopp. Yeah, it, and and uh, I was in a, I was in an architecture group, and uh, sort of it, at least for us, it appeared that you know we, even uh, Moore's law had been declared already that this would keep on growing. So the opportunity to Bill would be great, but everything had to be done on a semiconductor. And the semiconductor, therefore, any method I would come up with, if it didn't have an implementation on a semiconductor, it would be useless. Because prior to that, you had discrete components. So I came up, hit upon this idea of, you know, asynchronous arrays. That's what you see here. I, after I came up with the idea, I actually built it. I, I didn't believe, you know, uh, until I said, I gotta build and make sure it works. So that array on the left-hand side has zeros and ones and stars. Did you do it yourself or did your graduate students help you? No, I, well, I, I had uh, two graduate students, but I am good with my own hands. Uh, um, so we, we built it, and in fact, um, there is a diagram somewhere. They are on the next one. Oh, Something right on the right. Oh, yeah, here, right here. And that's and a here's, what is Pet it? PetriNet, you know, it was Petri a Pet yes. PetriNet language which is a which defined the control. And it, whatever PetriNet you could write by just programming that, um, you know, array, I could implement it. So in a way, I had an FPGA. That was a folded FPGA, pre-programmable, right? Uh, and that was later on called storage logically. Now, as soon as I did this, of course, I was already engaged, even though I had no expertise in semiconductor, next steps would be doing that. Okay. So I think that, next slide. So this is how its structure was, you know, diodes, you know, were the ones I was programming. So the SLA, I assume, is storage logic array? Exactly. And so the storage in this case. University of Utah, uh, okay. 1980. Now, this is a just graph paper, okay? And so I came up with this symbolic way of, so instead of having just a table with zeros and one, which one equation in a row, I introduced the notion, if I put a parenthesis, 
Okay, that meant a uh, flip flop there. And so, because it was a folded array, I could actually start writing on a regular graph paper, you know, a description instead of being one kind of table, describe the entire chip. So this one is, I think, uh, which there is a uh, chip's name is given. Okay, 2910. So how do you pr uh, see whether your work idea works? Just take standard parts and just start, uh, you know, reading what they do and write it up uh, on a graph paper and that is. Can you tell us how the storage logic array is different from the programmable logic array? Because the flip flops are distributed wherever you want. Want to register? Declare a register. Okay. So anyway, keep, keep uh, next slide, please. All right. So. My research at MIT was funded by um, National Science Foundation and uh, DOD. My research at the University of, or why did I go to the University of Utah from MIT? I always wondered that, especially, <laughs> since you're, especially you're Indian and Mormon country. Yeah, well, you know, I'm an immigrant, okay? <laughs> Which means uh, we, don't, we don't have a problem, we, we go west. <laughs> <laughs> so what had happened is I had been trying to somehow get access to a fan to prove the idea, okay? And uh, it so happened, you know, I'm going with my suitcase showing how this thing works and I go to all the university, I land in the University of Utah. And there's, there is uh, Professor Evans there and he says, Suhas, you know, you can't do this at MIT. We got a fab. Okay? General Instrument, you know, has a fab. They are giving it to us. I would like to have a real SI program. And Dr. Ravindra, <laughs> you know, had just come there as a student. So uh, I, I said, okay, I, I know half of the faculty. I will come in order to prove my idea, and also at the same time prove real SI lab. And I got one of the largest National Science Foundation grant at that time you know, in order to pursue this. But I also had support of John Instrument. As you will see later, that has a, had a lot of influence on exactly what I did. So come uh, 1980, paper ideas have, have proven themselves. And GI says, they don't do much good. <laughs> we got. Uh, general division, we do set-top boxes, but really, if it's any good, you have to be able to put the whole box in a single chip. That means SOC. It is now That's 1979. System on right? System on. So they gave me a challenge, but also said, you have to do so much, you have to do the tools, otherwise you can't design. So with their support, I left university, and they gave me the money, meaning funding. Now they, was that General Instruments? General Instruments, Instruments Corporation. General Instruments. Gave and you were doing money. what, a set-top box on a chip? No, I was doing the tools, and whatever thing they throw at me, I would design. Okay. okay? So here it is. The first challenge was, you know, at the, as soon as I started, 1981, this is, this is the, digital board of the set of box. There were other tuners, etc. They you know there was another high frequency. But this needs to be turned into a chip. So we take this thing out and we plug the chip and that's how it needs to work. Okay? So this was this was the chip. Okay? So here it is. We don't have a tools. Okay? And that time technology was N MOS. Okay. Previously, we had proven SLA using I squared L. Well, so here it is. We set out to do that, uh, and uh, by end of 1981, you know, we had actually taped up. So this is a SOC from the year 1981, and this was a backup. The real work was given. That was a major that. accomplishment. <laughs> at that. But the that interesting was fact was 35 is 35 years ago. The interesting fact is that after we could not be trusted 
none of us had designed a chip, not me, not my students, right? And whatever half a dozen people I had, they were all my students. So, you know, could yeah, it wasn't a huge transition <laughs> from being a professor with graduate students to forming a commercial company that has to make a profit or die? You have to understand, professors have to... System. That was Patil Systems. Yes, professors. Later, which later became Cirrus Logic. Yeah. Professors have to hustle. Okay? Write grant proposals, and they have to actually get things done, otherwise, their students will go hungry. So I was kind of used, <laughs> used to that. Okay? So it, it turns out that we were a backup because the risk was too much. Uh, and uh, another company was doing the standard way, meaning full custom way. Our first chip worked. Not only worked, the other chip looked like it would take still quite a long time to get finished, let alone be processed. So it became the chip that went into the box. And so we got uh, the box meaning the set top box. Set top box. General Instruments was at the time a leading manufacturer of set top boxes as well as a semiconductor company. They were located in Long Island, New York, yeah. where I went to school. <laughs> so anyway, that's the story of that. Next slide, please. Okay, so now, come a little bit later, I figured out that we couldn't raise money in Salt Lake City, okay? Uh, until General uh, Instrument Daddy was giving us money, it was fine. But there was a downturn in industry and I had to raise, uh, I got some money, but I had to raise money using only angel investors and there were not enough angels for me in Salt Lake City. So <laughs> yeah. So I won a contract from Gerald Division for the next set top box chip. And that was for uh, for me to deliver them uh, again now the next generation of uh, thing for so called Starcom, and I negotiated, the price was going to be $4, not one cent more. And I was going to walk if it was not $4, okay? Because I had no money to ship with the chips, okay? So anyway, I got it, and uh, we got the order in August, started work on Labor Day, finished it on Thanksgiving. The chip was back from the fab. By that time, we packed up and moved to Bordeaux Drive in San <laughs> And chip came, and it worked. I mean, if it, I don't know what would have happened if it had not worked. Okay? So that was the gating item? That was the <coughs> critical point in your career? I think where that you, was you made the transition, you effectively made the transition professor to an entrepreneur and a computer aided design EDA technologist? Yeah, by, in two years, meaning 1982, we had a full design system all the way SLA entry to get this netlist to simulate timing whole chip level which nobody had, you know, translate that to GDS file, which did not have to be checked for design rule violations, and it would go straight to the fab. So we, unlike other industry, we actually had it whole thing. Anyway, that's our story. Once it got going, I, I actually have brought the pieces here, and uh, you can, next few slides, oh. just show them in larger quantity. I mean, larger pieces. This one? Yeah, high level language. That is the oh, SLA. That looks pretty dense. 